Thank you so much, Niharika, for having me on this session. And uh, today we're going to talk about delegation and empowerment. No leader can do everything themselves. A statement uh, in itself, because we all are human beings and uh, we have so much of time and uh, so much of uh, energy, which we can utilize to do some amount of work. And uh, we cannot just, uh, we're not superhumans, right? We cannot go ahead and do everything on our own. And so as the leaders and ends, it becomes immensely important that we learn how to delegate. And uh, delegation in itself is a very important aspect and something that kind of becomes a catalyst in one's growth. Now, before we go into talking about different aspects of delegation and the benefits out of it, I would first want to share as to what kind of environment that you are in when you should think of delegation. Given the outbreak of startups today, a lot of organizations are still figuring out what they are and the culture that they want to bring in. Everybody wants to strive to have the best culture, but currently, what is their culture? And if you are in a place where you might be questioned if you start delegating. It's safe not to delegate. So let's let's look at some of the items which I believe are of utmost importance and also a formula that, that is pretty straight forward, which is does your organization, and it could be your whole company or your manager or your functional leader, anyone do they believe in competency and integrity right does your company respect competency and integrity and that's right there is the formula of what you should look for uh, before you start delegating now how would you know that you have the this kind of a feature or culture in your organization is when you know that these three C's are followed. Number one is culture. Is your organization, is your functional leader, is your manager, are they all believing in the competency, in, in the fight of competency, in working with high performing individual and respect the performance and cultivate high performance within their team. The second aspect is courage. Is your organization courageous enough to let go of people who don't fit in? Or are they stuck with people and they don't have enough courage to let them go? Which pretty much means that they don't, they're, they're not in the culture of competitive performance and they would not value the importance of high performing individuals. So again, something to look for. And communication is the key to everything and uh, organization which kind of picks and chooses what to communicate with the workforce is again not a safe place where you can start looking at a delegating work. So look at these three C's if you are in an organization where it is followed. And if these are, then you are safe to start delegating your work because that's when you can delegate or offload some of your work to your team members and focus yourself into the items that you are supposed to or which could take your team, your function, your organization to the next level. So that is where uh, the formula and the environment that you should be in before you start delegating. Now, before, again, before we get into the aspect of delegating, let's look at some of the items as to why someone would not delegate. And people who don't delegate are basically people, I call them as control freaks. Uh, people know me, understand that I sometimes exaggerate about things, just to put the point across. Uh, but there are people who don't like to delegate at all. They might say, yeah, I, I do it, or maybe I delegate it, but I want them to do it just the way I want it. And that's not really delegation. 
All right. So there are three kind of uh, people who would, or there are three reasons basically why someone would not delegate work. And number one is insecurity. And that's the most important reason that people shy away from delegating work. Uh, an, in an insecurity could be of their own job. Uh, insecurity could be of their monopoly, insecurity of their uh, control. Uh, there are so many things that they are insecure of. And, and most putting it in the really simple way is that they're afraid that if, if they give work to someone else and they're able to do it better than them, who would need them, right? So that's the kind of insecurity people carry. The second one uh, is that in order to delegate, it's difficult upfront. What I mean by that is you, you just don't delegate work. Like you just don't throw work to someone and expect them to do it, right? You also have to train them. You have to explain them what you want. And you have to also invest time in correcting the work that they are doing, guiding them. So it's, it takes a longer time to get someone else do the job for you than you yourself would do it. And the third item is a lot of people are stuck up with their own ways. They don't want to change the ways. They feel that whatever they are doing is the best and their way is the best way to solve a certain problem. And if you are in that zone, then you better not uh, be in a situation where you're delegating anything. Because uh, even if you delegate, you will be micromanaging people. And uh, you don't need that. Nobody would want delegation from a micromanager. So stay away or think about those things. And also uh, a tip for you would be to start looking at the work and the value of your time. And then think that whether spending your valuable time on this task is fruitful for you. And then again, look at it in, with the aspect that whether if you delegate this work to someone else, does it provide a growth opportunity for that person? So answering these two questions will give you clarity of whether you should delegate or not. And with that, let's look at when to delegate. Uh, another aspect of delegation, which is very important. And there are a few questions that I've put up, up on the board. And if you are getting answers to them as yes, then I am happy to announce that you are ready to delegate. So the first question is the task will reoccur, which means is it going to happen again? Is it going to happen every week, every month, every quarter, every year, right? Is it repetitive in nature? If it is, do you want to continue doing it yourself, right? You don't want to spend your time on a repetitive task. You've done it, been there, done that. Now move on, but train someone else to do it so that the results, the output is always sent across. So the question, when, if, if a task which is repetitive in nature, the answer would be yes, you can delegate it. Does the task provide an opportunity to grow? And the answer is yes. If it provides an opportunity for others to grow, then why not give that opportunity? It's great when you give opportunity to others to grow, you also grow. The other aspect is, do you have enough time to train and delegate the work effectively, right? We will look at how to delegate and it, it outlines various ac actions that you as a delegator should do, which takes time. So do you have time to do that? or you are in a time crunch situation where it'll be much easier if you just do the work and get the results and send the output to whoever it is required in a shorter span of time. Then go ahead and do that. If you have enough time, why not train someone else, right? And then uh, I've kept one of the most important question at the bottom, which is, is this a task that I should delegate? As a leader, you have to have your focus on certain aspects of your job. If and you don't want to delegate those, I mean, obviously you won't, won't want to delegate that because you need to focus on that. Some tasks are just for you. 
So you don't have to delegate those tasks. So you need to ask this question for every task that you get in. You look at it and you think, ask these questions, right? And if you ask your questions, should I delegate this or I should do it? Answer is I should do it. I will do it. If the answer is it's okay to delegate, then you delegate. Some, some of the very simple and basic questions we tend to forget while we are delegating. So let's keep these in our memory. And uh, a tip here, uh, I've seen a lot of people uh, looking at delegation as one of the aspects of growth that when if they start delegating work, they will be looked as one of the probable candidates, which is true, yes. Delegation is one of the aspect for people to look at when, which kind of tells that you are able to direct work, which means you're ready for the next role, right? But again, it's not the only one. So if someone is over delegating, you need to look at it. Don't overdo anything. At the same time, uh, we need to also understand as to who we want to delegate, right? We can't ask a fish to climb a tree. It's, it's just gonna kill the fish in the process. So we don't wanna do that. So when we wanna delegate work to someone, we need to uh, check their background, their experience, their knowledge, their skills. Does the individual fit to solve that problem? Yes. He's the person or she's the person. If the individual does not have the required skills, why would you, right? Is that individual an independent worker? If that individual is not an independent worker, what's the point? If you have to spoon feed every step, right? So look for someone who is independent worker. And does that person have enough time just like you have to balance your work and life, everyone else has to balance their work and life. So if somebody has too much of work in their plate, it's worthless giving them more work. They would not be able to do it and you would probably left unsatisfied. So it's better to give work to someone who has time so that they can use up their time and do the work for you. Now, another tip on... Uh, who to delegate is when you're delegating work to someone else, X, Y, Z, he or she, they might take more time than you, you, you would normally take to accomplish a task. Don't, don't get worried about it because if you have delegated to the right person and you've put in enough efforts to delegate it the right way, you are assured that you will get the results. So be assured in your process of delegation rather than the timeline of the task. You need to be patient because the person is still learning and, and understanding how to finish a task. So give them that time. Now we've covered when to delegate, who to delegate. Let's look at how to delegate because how to delegate is the real meat of matter. If you don't delegate it the right way, you are in trouble. So it's very important that we delegate it the right way. And what is the right way? I've put in some points on the board for your reference, and I'm just gonna go ahead and talk about each one of them one by one, right? So when we are delegating work to someone else, we have to ensure that we give the result or the desired outcome that we want very clearly. Because if you don't do that, the other person is confused. They don't know how, what to solve and what, what, what are you expecting out of it? If they don't have that clarity, probably they'll not be able to do it. So spend time in explaining the outcome of your desire. If, and, and that is where you have to spend a lot of time. So remember that again, Identify the constraints and the boundaries, how much and what all that individual can do, which other departments they can touch in, how much changes they can do to the existing stuff. So those kind of boundaries you have to set. At the same time, you have to also provide them or empower them to choose what they want to do, right? You have a task, it might have subtasks to it. Provide them 
uh, with the variety of options that you would want to delegate to let them choose because after all they have to do certain tasks and if they like something that they want to do then they, they would do it in a better way along with the work that you're giving right you're giving the responsibility to solve certain problem with that responsibility you are supposed to give authority as well because if you're not giving them the authority you will end up doing a lot of work for them rather than the other way so think about it if you give work you give them authority as well so that's a combination you should be ready to give up also be there for them uh, when they are doing it for the first time, they might uh, do errors. They they might have certain situation they need more clarifications on. Stand by them, support them, and help them solve the problems. Don't do it. Eh? Don't do the things for them, but support them. Show them how to solve a certain uh, roadblock, and uh, they'll be more than happy. And another critical aspect of delegation is focus on results. Right. A lot of us, if you saw the first slide, a lot of us are stuck on my way. My way is the best way. Right. Don't be in that zone. Always look or focus on the results. Don't focus on how it's done. Probably the person does it in a better way than you are already doing it. And that's that would be beneficial to you. So just ignore how they're doing it. Focus on the result. Remember that. Discuss the timelines. Obviously, you don't want to drag your project for months and quarters and years. So discuss the timeline that this is the timeline and this is the deadline. It cannot go beyond that. And uh, spend time to review the work properly. And let's look at the last point in a little more details because why it is important, I'll share it. But at the same time, once the task is completed and you've received the work as per your desire, uh, as I'm giving tips on each slide and this slide also one tip is to appreciate them openly and if possible in a written manner probably an email would boost the morale in a big way now moving on to the last point that we have which is take time to review all the submitted work and uh, why it is so important well importance of full acceptance and what I mean by full acceptance is take full time to review the work that you have given and only and only accept fully complete good quality work do not compromise on that because if you compromise on that what happens is your team member will never learn how to do the job properly and you will have to rework the whole thing and spend even more time whereas you wanted to delegate the work to save time so the last point of accepting the work is very critical spend time to review it ensure that it is done the right way i mean not the way but the work is done and the output is exactly what you wanted you need to ensure of that if if that's accurate job well done and uh, what happens what kind of benefits we get out of uh, delegation so as we started talking about delegation and empowerment i'm just trying to connect both of them and saying delegation leads to empowerment and how because it lets you trust others to do your work so that is number one paradigm of empowerment your people start feeling encouraged because they know that you trust them and that's more than enough for them to feel boosted and also gives you an opportunity to let others go grow and develop their skills there are a lot of things that you're doing and if you de start delegating it with your team members they will feel happy they will feel empowered they will feel engaged and you will have a highly motivated team to work with and many a times uh, delegation provides an opportunity of finding a way to do the job way better than what you are doing right i i said that earlier but it it is one of the hidden benefits of delegation you are doing a certain way and bam 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 10 steps you delegate it to your 
another employee in your team and then you figure out that they are doing it in five steps. Boom, there's a better way to do it. Probably you didn't know and they knew it. So it's, it's an discovery as well. So all of these are a lot of benefits for everybody, for you, for your organization, for your function, for, for the whole company, uh, for the individual. So it's a win-win. If you do the delegation to the right person in the right manner, at the right time, it's a win-win for everybody. So with that, uh, I'll leave for questions. If there are any questions or if you want to make any comments, we are open. Thank you so much for attending the session. All right, well, thank you very much and uh, have a great day. Uh, I'll post the answers as well. Uh, and we will also share a worksheet along with the recording of this uh, session to everybody. Have a great day.